It kind of also allows everybody to feel like I'm a true collaborator on this. The final product is really that was my idea to shoot it this way. And I brought that as an actor. It was my idea to do this. And um, I don't know. It's so funny. You would think it would make shooting go so slow because everybody's mm -hmm. figuring it out. Oh, you know, but this doesn't work or this works. And what are we going to do? But it actually, we shot so fast that way after we developed a rhythm with it. I don't know if I answered your question, but I tried. <laughs> Welcome back uh, to The Work, um, our ongoing series about Chicago filmmaking and Chicago filmmakers. Um, my name is Bradley Powell. I'm a writer-director, and I'm here with... Emily Leap, and I'm a writer-director as well. And thank you for joining us, Emily. I'm very excited to have this conversation with you. Oh, me too. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yes. So let's dive right in. Um, the broad topic for today's kind of conversation uh, is collaboration. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, uh, you know, film is a very collaborative art form and we hear that all the time, but we really wanted to sit down with somebody and uh, pick their brain about like, what does that actually mean when we say collaboration? Because I'm sure that means uh, a myriad of things to a myriad of different groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, maybe we should start very, uh, basically, and just say, um, what are your experiences with uh, collaboration, Emily? Like, how do you uh, begin that process? What does that look like to you? What does that mean to you when you hear the word collaboration? Mm -hmm. Well, I think collaboration is like a chorus of ideas. And um, so I think I try to look for like diversity and diverse experience with people that I collaborate with, I think. Um, and obviously, yeah, filmmaking is all about collaboration. It's a team effort. And um, what do I look for? Is that what you asked? Sure. I mean, um, yeah. What do you look for in collaborators, I guess? Um, how do you know when you're simpatico with somebody? Mm hmm um, I think, well, I start off, like I said, looking for a diverse group of people that I can, that's different than my own. Um, uh, I look for skilled in their role. Um, somebody that's cooperative and that has, I feel like when I'm really looking for somebody, I want to feel like there, there's no ego attached, that they're open to suggesting their ideas, but they're not going to get personally hurt if, that's not what we go with. Um, somebody that looks like outside the box, it's creative. Mm -hmm. I don't know, generally most of the collaborators that I connect with are just people in the commu film community here in Chicago or in Los Angeles, um, people that I already know. Yeah. Um, so most of the time, I don't know what about for you. Um, I mean, I my ideal kind of collaboration, I've mm -hmm. always dreamed of having, um, maybe this will answer your question in a roundabout sort of way. Um, I've always dreamed of having uh, essentially, like doing film uh, that's more akin to theater or, or summer stock, where you have like a group of people who you collaborate with often. Mm. And um, I think when I look back on many, indeed most of the filmmakers that I really, really, uh, am into um, and like several of their films. Uh, most of those people worked with a steady group of uh, mm -hmm. people through the at least the the high points of their careers. Yeah. You know, you see stretches of uh, films from uh, I don't know, like you know, Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger come to mind. Like mm -hmm. they're some of my uh, favorite filmmakers, and they work with. They worked with Jack Cardiff as their cinematographer on a lot of things. And you mm -hmm. can go down the, the list of filmmakers throughout the history of film. Um, a lot of them work with the same actors over and over again. A lot of them work with the same, you know, behind the camera sort of people over and again, over and again. And I think that's how you develop a shorthand um, yeah. with people. And, and, and that enables you to, uh, you know, go deeper with every project. You don't have to start from square one. Right. Um, so 
to answer your question more specifically, yeah, I prefer to work with people that I do uh, have a relationship with, but mm -hmm. that necessitates then me uh, at some point, like I'm still building that team um, mm -hmm. from my waypoint, my point of view right now. I have found some pieces and some pieces that uh, some people that I'd like to work with again, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know that I found uh, security in that yet. And I'm still constantly looking for uh, people to, uh, you know, make art with and that feel uh, mm -hmm. like a family with. What do you feel the role of the, well, both the writer and the director, but I'm assuming you kind of, I mean, you're kind of the genesis point for most of your, your projects. And so how do you think a writer, director, creator, filmmaker um, can best uh, navigate like uh, the territory with other collaborators or maybe a simpler way of putting it is what is your role as, um, do you see yourself as having a special role in terms of collaboration because you are the, the genesis point um, maybe? If that makes any sense. I like that, the Genesis point. <laughs> yeah. That is my title on set. Right. And in many ways, like I think people would think that, or people have said that both the Genesis point as the director, but also mm -hmm. the end point um, mm -hmm. in some ways. You're the one traditionally steering the ship. So, right. what types of responsibilities come with that? What types of downsides? What kinds of pitfalls do you have to look out for any of that mm -hmm. well I think as a leader you kind of set the pace and the environment on set so I think that's the first thing is you're you're showing people what is okay and not okay on set I mean you're protecting your actors you're protecting your crew you're protecting their time and their experience and you're protecting your vision Mm. Um, so there's a lot of responsibility I feel with that because I've before I started making my own project I was an actress in Los Angeles for almost 10 years did a, several films and commercials and you really learned a lot about the director's role on creating the environment for everybody that was is working there Mm -hmm. So first, if you create a safe environment that people can express themselves and um, push themselves and try things kind of that are out of their like normalcy and their ideas, like, you know, like film school, pushing themselves beyond film school ideas, you know, and, and even the, their favorite filmmakers, like beyond that, like trying things and letting go of their expectations. Um, when you say film school ideas, can you delve more into what you mean by that? Well, I didn't go to film school, but um, my experience has been that depending on where people went to film school, sometimes there is like curriculum that's always taught and filmmakers that are always introduced. And so you kind of develop this style yeah. where a lot of people have similar style and perspective. Um, and so I think some of the best I've worked with people that have gone to film school and haven't, um, have and haven't, and it's always really interesting to find out where they went to school. And I didn't know that there's like even between people where they went to film school, what they think of the other person's school that they went to. And so there's all of that. So I don't know, it's just sometimes it's nice just to have somebody that's just educated themselves more than followed their favorite teacher's point of view on this artistic medium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, uh, I agree that the self, uh, I'm trying to figure out a, a, a synonym for the word self-starter because I really hate the sound of that, but like somebody who has um, equipped themselves with uh, tools and education about their craft is definitely an enticing sort of trait to have for a collaborator. You know, I always tell people, um, you know, my kind of philosophy on collaboration is uh, when I'm talking to somebody who I'm potentially bringing on a project, uh, I tell them, look, I wouldn't bring you on this project, but for the fact that you are a capable and intelligent 
um, person with a uh, creative vision and I want to hear from you if I'm not uh, hearing from you and you're just kind of um, either seating ground to me as the director or if you're um, uh, kind of afraid or uh, reticent to share uh, with me your point of view there's no point of you being here I could just do this myself if that was the case and so I want you as a collaborator to come on and uh, be forthcoming and um, it's not to say that we're always, you know, I've, as you kind of hinted at, it's not to say that we're always going to agree on everything. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm not hearing what it is you're thinking, um, it makes it incredibly hard for me as a director to make uh, more informed decisions. And yeah. I think for me, that's kind of my role as a director. I kind of set the you know, we're going on a journey together as a group. Um, and I, you know, have a map and a compass, but um, I don't know how we're going to necessarily get from, you know, town A to town Z. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm telling the collaborators, look, along the way, I'm going to need your input. You know, should we be going by bicycle? Should we be going by train? Should we be going on foot? Yeah. And to extend the metaphor even uh, more absurdly, like there's going to be times where uh, there's going to be a question of, you know, one of those modes of transportation. And I may say, look, I, I like your idea about going by the car, but we can't do that for this reason. So we're going to have to go by hang glider. I, I know it sounds insane, but we have to do that. And um, as long as you've had that conversation uh, where everybody feels like they've been heard, um, I think if people can, if I can respect them as collaborators by hearing them out and they can respect me and know that I've heard them out and trust that even if we don't go with their opinion, uh, their suggestion, that it's, uh, it's not personal. It's just that I've made the determination that this mm -hmm. other way has to be the way that we do it for this particular film at this particular moment. I think that's, the makings of a good mm -hmm. uh, collaborate collaboration. To go further in that a little bit more detail, what in what ways do you prompt or do you ask questions so that you are opening up the space for them to share? Because if you're setting up a shot, do you turn to whoever you're collaborating with and say, so what do you think about this? Or in what ways do you actually, how would, what does that actually look like for sure. you? So I am a believer in people sharing and be, being forthcoming, but I'm also a believer in time, place, and manner. So there are situations where I'm more wanting to hear people's suggestions and other situations where I don't want to hear them at all. <laughs> and got to read you. Uh, right, yeah. So... Um, I think that's for me why I'm big on rehearsal. I'm big in pre-production. I'm big on, uh, I think once you get on the set, uh, as we all know, uh, time is ticking and money is flying out the door, mm -hmm. flying out of your pocket or whatever the, the phrase should be. And so by that time, uh, you already have to have most of your major decisions made at that point or else you're going to be in trouble and so uh at that point people re once you get on set people really have to be in their specialized sort of their specialized sort of modes and, and roles i think um and it's less of uh you know if if craft services has a great idea about how this film can be better I am not opposed to hearing it, but mm -hmm. I, it's going to be very hard to hear that when we only have 15 minutes left before uh, we're losing an actor and, <laughs> uh, you know, and we have to just get something down. We can't completely change course courses right. with 15 minutes uh, left to go. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that, you know, the proper manner really is like, you know, when we're doing all these kind of preps 
we're going on location scouts, we're going on, uh, you know, doing acting rehearsals, we're going to do uh, sound tests, et cetera, tech tests. That's where it's more of a free exchange of, uh, an I of ideas. And then obviously when I'm just talking to the individual department heads or individual, uh, you know, roles um, on a more personal level, not during the filming necessarily, but mm -hmm. you know, when, when I'm bringing them on and like in those initial stages where we're planning, that's mm -hmm. where those things are best offered most times. Obviously there's exceptions, there's no hard and fast rule. And it may be that someone just sh shouts out something <laughs> at some point that is just brilliant and we go, oh yeah, that is, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, just, to answer your question, more often than not, it's usually in the earlier stages. Um, do you find any of that for your yourself? Okay. No, actually, I think all a lot of the pre stages, it's kind of like my own space, my own world. And I actually really don't start collaborating until we're getting ready to shoot on set that day. Okay. So um, yeah, usually how that looks is, I mean, I've always worked on a very limited budget. And so I haven't had the space to have a lot of departments and stuff like that. A lot of people are kind of jacks of all trade and, you know, jumping in and filling in where they can. And I don't really like large crews. I only, I'm happy working with one sound engineer and my cinematographer and the actors and that's it i don't want anybody else there maybe an ac but i want nobody there mm -hmm. um, and i use all natural light so i don't do any lighting and the sound is usually we do a log and a boom and almost always i end up using the boom audio so sometimes i won't even log if i don't feel yeah. like it so i do have a kind of very like free style and so i think before arriving to set, I have storyboarded the way that I want to shoot the scene. Mm -hmm. And then I provide that to a couple nights before to the cinematographer that I work with. And any ideas he has once we get there, we do a quick walkthrough. And logistically with his camera, I shoot a lot on the shoulder rig, um, see if that works. And if that does or doesn't work, then we improvise. and. Um, I ask actors all the time, how does this feel to you? Does this feel natural? Where do you think your character would be in this room? Uh, where do you think when they would exit this space or come in and stuff like that? So a lot of it happens on production for me, um, but not necessarily in pre-production at all. What types of benefit or freedoms does that offer when you're doing it on set as opposed to pre-production for you? Um, how do you like, you know, well, yeah, just that, what types of, what types of benefits do you think that offers you as opposed to doing it the other way? I think I don't like being stuck in, um, I mean, it allows me to, to develop the essence of the film prior to being on set just with myself mm -hmm. and the, uh, yeah. So just developing that on my own and sitting with it. And then kind of storyboarding or providing like packets of images and stuff that I want it to look like or feel like. That's basically all I send. And I think what freedom it provides me is that I have this idea, but I want it to flow. I don't want to be strict with it. I'm not rigid with it. The only thing I am rigid with is no lighting. I don't want any false lighting. And I don't want any... Um, like, I don't want makeup and hair and all that stuff. I like all just very natural, almost documentary, like. Yeah. And so it provides a freedom of, like, I don't have anything stuck in my mind that has to be this way. Um, so I do visually see the way the scene unfolds, and I work with my cinematographer walking through that once we get in the space. But it kind of also allows everybody to feel like I'm a true collaborator on this. The final product is really that was my idea to shoot it this way and I brought that as an actor it was my idea to do this and um, I don't know it's so funny you would think it would make shooting go so slow because everybody's mm -hmm. figuring it out oh 
you know, but this doesn't work or this works and what are we going to do? But it actually, we shot so fast that way after we developed a rhythm with it. Talk about that rhythm maybe, because that sounds interesting. How did you, uh, so it sounds like you build a momentum uh, kind of doing this style, um, <laughs> but in what ways as a director are you helping that to foster that, uh, that fuel for that? Um, like, what are you actually saying to people uh, in order to get them to be free and open in that, in that moment? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I believe a lot in, in kind of, this sounds weird, but, or like woo-wee, but I'm very like spiritually and energetically connected. And yeah. so like I said, when I create an environment, usually whatever location we go to, I come in and I sit down in it. And I feel kind of like just an openness with the space and I really think about it. And um, the rhythm that I set up is kind of letting everybody be an adult and do their thing. You know, I let the sound get set up. They do a bunch of testing while me and my cinematographer are blocking things out to make sure it actually works. The mm -hmm. actor is crit is critical in the blocking of that shot and talking through it, even though I might have a vision and storyboarded, this is how I want to shoot it. Um, the actor might say, actually, I've got an idea. Why don't I come into this back door and go across here? And I'm like, yeah, let's try that. And I feel like because we shoot, I was able to shoot so fast, you could always try somebody's idea. What, what's, the, what's the problem not trying it? You know what I mean? So just give them a take of yeah. their idea and whether or not you use it in the final cut then who cares it just takes an extra minute or two to do it so i don't know i don't know if i answered your question but i tried <laughs> no coming from your acting background i think that's also uh, an interesting place uh, to talk about were there things that you as an actor uh kind of were you always well, first of all, were you always both acting and filmmaking or was there like a distinct acting period and now there's a filmmaking slash acting period? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I basically wanting to know as an actor, did you pick up on things uh, from a collaboration standpoint that you now use as a director? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, are there um, sort of, tendencies like did you have another vantage point perhaps into collaboration that mm -hmm. has helped to inform what you do and who you've become as an artist um, now that you're looking at it from behind the camera a thousand percent a thousand a million one percent <laughs> if that is even a number um i really recommend to everybody that they take some acting classes and try being an actor on their friends whatever student project or something because you get to and do several of them for several friends because i feel like you get such a greater depth of understanding for that key role your people that are going to be your face you mm -hmm. get so much more depth of knowledge um and it did I mean, being in Los Angeles, you just work on such a variety of projects from super indie stuff to big studio projects and, you know, very high budget stuff. Um, and I honestly really didn't like the high budget, big sets, big production stuff. I did a lot of stand-ins for Warner Brothers, like a TV show on Warner Brothers. And I just was like, this is interesting way to be creative mm -hmm. I don't know it was just like I think the things that I am drawn to in film are truth and like um there's this, just a strong note of that in the films I'm drawn to and I felt like I want to be conducive to that environment for the actors mm -hmm. so I think there is things filmmakers can really do to provide that um and yeah, I learned a lot about it. And um, one of my first films that I worked in was called Gaia. And it was from a filmmaker from the UK who has a very open um, freestyle kind of the way I shoot. Mm. And he really influenced me. I did a lot of stuff behind the camera with him. Um, 
where I watched the way he filmed and he shot on the shoulder rig and he didn't know what he was going to shoot. He had ideas and he went and, and flowed with it. And he just shot beautiful work, such beautiful, intimate gripping that touched you, that left an impression on you. You didn't di just digest it and forgot about it. You were entertained for that moment and it's gone. This stuff that like left an imprint on you. So that inspired me to, once I turned 30, to make my own work. Before that, I was mainly focused on acting, writing, and I did some stuff like on the production side for a ton of things. But um, I knew once I got into my 30s, I really wanted to focus more on making my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about for you? Did you ever do any acting? Um, I have acted, um, I'm sh nothing on your level, but I, I, I've done on, you know, as a kid, I did some more acting, did some plays and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And um, yeah, I mean, I have tremendous respect for, for actors and what they do and what yeah. they bring. Uh, but I also know that I feel far more at home uh, where I'm at now. Totally. Um, but I do, um, you know, I would like to consider myself, and you know, I mean, maybe it's not for me to say, but I'd like to consider myself an actor's director. Uh, mm -hmm. And how I would describe that is that, you know, I, I love the collaboration uh, with actors. That's usually you know, one of, if not my very favorite parts of the process um is you know especially uh you know from the first time an actor is reading uh lines that you've written mm -hmm. uh, and you go into that kind of rehearsal space mm -hmm. um that testing space that uh improvisational space that finding the rhythms and the feeling of what it is that uh they're doing as a character uh, space. I oh, know that's my favorite uh, portion of the filmmaking process. Mm -hmm. And so that's extremely collaborative. And, you know, I may have, you know, even going to like starting at casting, mm -hmm. I might have worked on a project for several months, if not years, if whatever. And so by the time I get into a casting uh, call, I might have very strong uh, ideas or impressions of who the character is mm -hmm. um, but I think the collaboration starts with the first time somebody comes in who breaks one of those notions yeah. and they're they're either um, better than what I assumed but they're different or they're at least providing something different that makes me question what I've mm -hmm. written and so you know there have been times where I've uh, completely re-envisioned a character just because the actor who has been presented to me uh, comes in bringing some energy or flavor that wasn't considered beforehand and I think it's valuable to add mm -hmm. um, and so like that is a form of collaboration uh, in my opinion and yeah. that only builds from there I mean I do right. um, pretty extensive rehearsals when I when I if I have if my if I have my own way, I, I do pretty extensive rehearsals, mm -hmm. um, and they're all you know they're they're pretty jam packed with collaboration. The actor bringing in, um, you know, bits and pieces of who they are playing without you know me having a strict control of that situation. Do you ever rehearse? No, I haven't. I can see the benefits from doing them. It's kind of like almost like a warm up and a generative of ideas and mm -hmm. and stuff. I was going to actually ask you what what are some of the benefits you've had from rehearsing because I've been very opposed to them because as an actor I really don't like them. I feel like it stifles me. I feel like I like to improvise on set in the space with the person um and it's time consuming. And so I'd rather just bring the magic when to bring the magic and capture it and be done with it so what do you find that you get from that because that might and maybe it will change my point of view on it yeah um 
Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Let's change your view. <laughs> like, um, I, I've never done it before. I, yeah. you know, besides in theater and stuff, obviously you have to, but I'm just wondering for film, what does it bring for you? Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've talked about this other places, but like in, in brief, I think it all depends on how you're defining rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, because I too um, have a lot of the same concerns that you have in terms of, um, you know, the magic cap capturing aspect and the yeah. spontaneity capturing aspect that you're referring to. Yeah. Um, in my rehearsals, I tend not to be text specific uh, and thus we save a lot of the magic for the set. So, you know, when I first bring in an actor and we're collaborating together, um, you know, I'm wanting them to embody a character uh, that I've created in, in my in my head, uh, mm -hmm. generally speaking, when I've written something. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to do that, I'm asking them, you know, you can only play in, it's at least it's my of my belief, and maybe it's not everybody's, but you can only play uh, who you are. There are different shades, exaggerations, lessenings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, the actor embodying the character is the actor embodying the character. So what I'm wanting them to do is, uh, you know, we do a lot of uh, very, uh, you know, almost like rudimentary, basic sort of work, like all right, we're going to spend the next 30 minutes just figuring out how you walk. Right. Let's go from this wall to that wall <laughs> and try out different things. And the, so there's all sorts of improvisations. The actor may come in with, you know, oh, I think I'm going to have a limp in, on my left side or uh, the actor may come in and go, I walk really fast or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But we're trying out all these different things. Um, and the text is not a part of this. You know, uh -huh. we're, not, we're not sitting there doing scene specific work. And I'm generally working with them on the level of one actor at a time. So mm -hmm. if I have, you know, an ensemble, I'm doing these individual rehearsals. I'm just, I just call them rehearsals because it's the mm -hmm. traditional name for these things. But uh, I'm working in like with eight different actors individually, never mm -hmm. bringing them together to, mm -hmm. to do anything until they all have an understanding of who they are as a character, they need to know how they walk, how they talk, how they eat, how they sleep, what their schedules in the days are, like everything, every consideration where they're becoming this person. I want them to embody this person for this, the, uh, the stretch of the, of the project. And then after they've gained some sort of mastery over all of that, that we've done for, you know, this, you know, couple of weeks or whatever, and they're feeling themselves as a, as a new formed uh, being, uh, then that's when you would introduce uh, other characters. And then you build, then the rehearsal becomes about the relationship between those mm -hmm. people. So you're doing a lot of relationship works. Text is still not a part of that. Mm -hmm. It's okay, let's like improv some scenes that don't actually is, exist in the final film or mm -hmm. that are suggested referred to in the final film, but you're not actually shown there. Or, mm -hmm. you know, how did you all first meet? Let's do an improvisation of that, et cetera, et cetera. So just getting comfortable with the relationship and you're doing relationship building mm -hmm. and uh, building that out and, and augmenting mm -hmm. uh, the characters from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. Then finally, after you've done the those two first stages, there might be, you know, let's say, this whole thing has been eight weeks, the last week and a half, two weeks, maybe mm -hmm. that's when you do some scene specific light work. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, if it's something gonna be, that's gonna be highly um, emotional or intricate, I might not go all the way into that scene. Yeah. You just kind of, here, just so we're not completely caught flat footed on the day of, Mm -hmm. let's kind of just walk through this generally speaking but I don't want you to go a hundred percent we're operating on 30 percent here just enough to have some general kind of idea but all through that is a collaboration and the actors are bringing stuff 
to the table. Yeah. Um, you know, and I do that with my behind the uh, the camera crew too, if if I can. I mean, we don't have rehearsals in the same sense as, as an actor, but you're still sitting down with your cinematographer yeah. and going from uh, a rudimentary sort of point to a much more specific point as you get closer to the production or your production designer or your sound people or what have you. But you're having to uh, start at the basics with the, with the, and not, and not have, you know, the fear is that if you start so basically, mm -hmm. you won't, you know, I think some people fear that they're not, they're like, well, well, if I'm not working on the text, what is this all for? But I think you have to have some sort of faith in the process that uh, by doing these small little things, they're all gonna add up and pay dividends later, hopefully. Um, but did that answer your question or did I just go on a long ramble for no, no I mean, that's very interesting. I never thought of rehearsals in that way. And I, I really like that, that whole like pro progressing through these different parts of working with the actors. It sounds like a lot of character work and kind of fleshing out ideas on those characters and developing those characters with the actor and then, yeah. you know, progressing on and not using, I, I always thought of rehearsals as rehearsing the damn scene. Right. And it, it was, it's always just not fun as an actor because especially like yeah emotionally intensive or anything like that it's just kind of like let's bring the magic when we get on set with the script and the text but i do a little bit of actually what you're saying where we have conversations and a lot of stuff like that in pre-production and tell me about what you think the actor you know or your character would be you know in this situation and i do a lot of fleshing out with them but um yeah that's really interesting the text is death like right no you know you want you don't want to get to it too quickly because those are all lived moments for the actors and the characters right and so you could in real life you would only live those moments once so mm -hmm. if you want to well at least in my belief you want to come as close to that as possible and have the actors only have to live that in a one time sort of deal as close okay. to as as possible obviously there might be take 47, <laughs> but like, you know, uh, you don't want to get to it too, uh, you, you don't want to wear it out. And so I do believe what you're saying is, it has some truth to it. And I, I try my best to, to guard against that, but that's why we focus on what are all the things that come before the text or yeah. come after the text. Those are the things that we can build a rehearsal around, hopefully, and mm -hmm. a more collaborative and idea generative sort of space there are definitely times where collaboration um works in the opposite direction and we were going to talk about conflict right. um and you know what i would say about conflict is that um i think one sh we we don't need to be like conflict averse like mm -hmm. necessarily i think some a certain amount of conflict is sometimes good in as far as it's like you can still gain the sense that the other person is conflicting with you because they're also trying to make uh, an amazing film and the same amazing film um there are times where you're conflicting because of some other reason that's not film related and you're taking your eye off the prize. And those are almost always horrible. But right. do you have, uh, if not examples, uh, at least uh, situations where in conflict has either served you well or has hindered a project that you can delve into? I mean, to be honest, most of my conflict hasn't been around ideas per se. I kind of wish it was. Yeah. There was because I, if there is a difference of ideas, I typically will, unless I feel extremely strongly, will shoot both ways. Mm. If the time and schedule allows for it. So most of my conflict um, 
which is unfortunate to because it's not much to delve into is has to relate with professionalism and ending of collaborations yeah so that's most of my my experience but it hasn't been around ideas it's I mean, actually, now I think about it, there's been one, uh, my first cinematographer, my first film, Mercy's Girl, I end up having to fire. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he really, even though I, I, the aesthetic for me was natural light, always 100% natural light, unless like, if we can't, then we would shoot another scene. You know, I'm that more of like that. If I, the light isn't right for that scene, then we'll go to a different scene and wait till the light is right for that scene. Yeah. Um, but he wanted to light it. And it was just really frustrating. And I think it was kind of the, the beginning of the film and we didn't have a good relationship already. I was already let down a little bit uh, on his professionalism and his ability. Yeah. And so already I was kind of feeling tense. I decided to open up and let him try what he wanted to do with lighting, even though it really wasn't my artistic vision. Um, and it ended up being something that I couldn't use. It looked so false and so fake. It was, he was trying to light a morning bed scene. And yeah. instead of just pulling the blinds, which is my aesthetic that I wanted to do, he wanted to really light it up blue, uh, like a blue morning. Um, and so that was, it was more of just taking note of that. There wasn't a lot of conflict. I let him try it. And then uh, uh, the professionalism ended up being why I had to let him go. Mm -hmm. What about for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had to let people go off of projects before because um, mm -hmm. we weren't vibing. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, however, um I'm trying to think i i can really only recall maybe one or two instances where we were already in production and i asked someone to leave generally speaking most of the people that i've let go have been in the pre-production stage like i um what's the adage there's some sort of adage about like uh like fire early what you know what i'm saying there's there's some sort of thing like i know what you're talking about it's just like yeah, saves you. it saves you to fire early basically or right. better early than later kind of thing yeah like i definitely follow that rule of i'm pretty extensive before i bring somebody on to begin with right um and then uh once uh, I generally, and this is kind of how I am with my personal relationships as well, actually, <laughs> like people, I'm very like, uh, you know, it, it takes a while to, to get in with me, but once people do get in with me, it's, I give them a lot of leeway to play mm -hmm. in that space and it would have to be something pretty major for me to then cut them out at that point. Right. Um, and so when you like bring that into the filmmaking world, same thing. I'm mm -hmm. pretty extensive in, if you want to call it the interview process, or you want to call it just the getting to know you process and the, mm -hmm. and the exchange process. I'm pretty extensive in that, mm -hmm. where by the time that I bring them on, even if they wind up not being the most ideal person, generally speaking, they're not, generally speaking, they're in the range of acceptability you know it's not the best way to talk about people but like they're 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 generally speaking of uh, a type and manner where they're not uh it's not some really incongruous sort of situation mm -hmm. it's in, it doesn't get to that level generally speaking and only in one or two instances uh i can think about like an actor once um, what, did they get to the place where it's just like, no, this person's got to go because generally speaking, what, what signals that to me is, are they not only being, um, uh, a hindrance to me personally, but also to the project in general. Um, and I don't normally, 
you know, I, I take on a lot uh, mm -hmm. of, I'm willing to take on people being a hindrance to me personally sometimes if I can see, okay, I'm kind of annoyed by that, but the project is still going to be better. Um, and it's only when the project starts being, the, hopefully the moment right before you, the project starts to be going in the wrong direction. Uh, yeah. And you can see that, that you go, okay, this person's got to go. It's great that you mentioned, uh, you know, like personal work, like with therapy and whatnot, because it's amazing how much of collaboration really is just those kind of interpersonal um, tools that yeah. uh, we can all stand to get a little bit better at. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I try to be uh, present for people. I try to, um, you know, be patient with people. That's a big one on film sets. <laughs> um, and I hope that they try to be patient with me. Um, and, you know, like, and recognizing my own, um, you know, my own like limitations, uh, mm -hmm. idiosyncrasies. And, um, you know, I, I would not say that I am a person who, f uh, fits with everybody, you know, like mm -hmm. there's a, there's a very specific type of person that I feel, uh, would enjoy working with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's far more the experience of people who like, okay, we shouldn't work together. Um, <laughs> And I think uh, part of being generous with myself and with others is kind of getting better at recognizing who those uh, simpatico people are going to be uh, earlier on in the process. Um, and then, like you said, just being as honest with them as possible. So you know, I definitely tell people, look, um, you know, I'm going to, if you come on this project, I'd love to have you, but, you know, it's going to be hard in these ways. Mm. And I'm not going to bullshit you on that. It's going to be difficult. There are going to be times of discomfort. There's going to be times of, uh, you know, anxiety or whatever these negative sort of emotions are. But what you have is my, hopefully my, uh, uh, assurance and my guarantee that while all of that is happening, there's still a safety net there and there's going to be a, a mutual level of respect there mm -hmm. uh, that is never going to be violated. Um, so right. if there's, I, I really think it's valuable when people, like when people buy in, especially as a writer director, when people buy into your vision, mm -hmm. uh, and say that they're going to come along with you on that journey that we spoke about earlier. Um, you have to be appreciative of that. So I think appreciation is is huge too, and you have to uh, vocalize that appreciation as much as possible and as uh, clearly as possible. So people, I, I feel like when people feel appreciated, they're willing to go the extra mile and do so much more for you and the project. Uh, yeah. And that's a big part of collaboration as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's right, it's building that encouragement, setting the tone on set, making people feel good, but yet vocalizing and being assertive with what you need. And you're so aware of everything. You're aware of time and money and all of that stuff. So you're, you're like a master jugular, a jugular master. Juggler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Juggler is juggler a word? Yeah, I juggle. Yeah, you got the. Okay. I mean, you got the your master juggler, right? <laughs> you juggler vein or, or arteries, veins, whatever. But anyway, I know one what you meant. I met one of those. I don't know which one, but yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I think this has uh, all been really fun and, and interesting. And, um, you know, thank you for sharing uh, your process with us uh, you. and your time. And, yeah, no, we're going to continue having these conversations um, with uh, various people in our community. And uh, we're learning all the time about 
uh, each other. And I think that's a great thing that we're hopefully in the process of doing these sorts of conversations, also building uh, out our community, because um, mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest, um, well, it's one of the biggest uh, reasons that, you know, I think something like this could be valuable right. is that we're, uh, you know, not only learning, but we are uh, in communion with, with our fellow filmmakers yeah. um, and supporting one another. And so, yeah, thank you so much for, mm -hmm. for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It was lovely to chat with you, Bradley. Yeah, and thank everyone out there.